Hello folks. Welcome to my first night of imaging with the Rasa. And uh, I'd say it's going pretty good, even though tonight kind of sucked. It's really hazy out there right now. Um, but let me show you what I've got so far. I think I, I'm liking what I see so far. Uh, well, let's see. I'm doing uh, the I'm you, imaging with the, the Bader HA filter at Unity Gain 13921. I'm doing one minute exposures. Um, and I'm not sure yet. The, the, the mean readout is, is going up and down, I think, because of the haze. And look at what the, it's doing to my, my star count right now. It's going up and down. But let me show you something. I, I don't have the autofocuser hooked up yet. I did a manual focus. And let me show you so far what the manual focus looks like. Um, it's been going for a while way down here. This image, the, um, I, I even have more images, but I had to reset the... I, I My sequence became corrupt because my PC crashed. It pissed me off. Anyway, but um, my, my HFR is 1.73 way down there at this image. But look at all the images I've captured so far at one minute. And my HFR is uh, holding steady at 1.64. So the focus, I mean, this is just the best way to see if your focus has changed, and, and mine hasn't. In fact, it's a tiny bit better from when I started. So I'm glad to see the focus holds, because I don't have my autofocuser um, hooked up yet. So that that's pretty good. Um, and the star count is going up and down. It was over 600 here before. So that's just because, I think, because of the haze. So I'm glad to see that. And, you know, I didn't even use a bad enough mask to focus it. I didn't want to deal with going to a bright star and using that. You know, I just ran the SGP's frame and focus and dialed it in until I had a good HFR. And I, you know what, that's good enough for me. So let's just, just take a look at uh, I, the image is refreshed so fast. I already have one open here. Um, let me close this. So that's the Soul Nebula at one minute exposure. Um, and that looks like I framed it high, but that's because I, there's some nebulosity I wanted to get down here. And uh, let, let's zoom into the middle here at 100% so you guys can see for yourself. Let's see what the stars look like. And um, right now, I think it passed the smell test. There's, the stars look um, absolutely round in the center. And um, they look round to the right. They look round all the way to the left. Let's go up to the upper right. That's not bad. That's not, I mean, compared to what I was seeing with my refractor, the, the wide field, I ha absolutely had um, uh, field curvature going on. I even had image tilt going on. That's the upper right. Now the bottom right, not perfect. But it's absolutely better than what I was seeing with my refractor. And that's no way would I ever touch collimation for that. No way. I'm not messing with collimation. And uh, that star looks round. That's the bottom left. And let's go to the upper. Oops. Where did my image go? Oops. Let's go to the upper left. I don't know. What do you guys think? This is absolutely, in my view, not something I would want to mess with. This is a very good, I think it's a very good image that I would feel comfortable capturing edge to edge and not cropping anything away. So, um, but that's my opinion. I think it's great. And I am relieved that I am not going to touch collimation. There's no way. It survived the trip over here. I, I'm really happy with it. Um, the focus is holding really well, and I'm going <laughs> to, the more the focus holds well, the less, the more reluctant I am to put on a, the autofocuser. But I'm going to do that eventually, but I might actually at least capture one object under my belt before, I, I just want to finish a, a project with the Rasa before I, I mess with anything again. And then after that, I'll put the autofocuser on there. So we'll see how that goes. And I'm not going to leave yet. I want to show you my setup um, outside, but I want to do it during the daylight hours tomorrow, and I didn't even capture flats yet. So um, I'll, I'll be back. So I'll see you later.
Okay, it's the next morning, <clears throat> excuse me, and I had my laptop out all night. That always scares me, but I was, you know, on the first night I was outside a lot. Um, I like to stick with new equipment on the first night outside, but I'll definitely move uh, the laptop inside next time. And next time I'll also be imaging with my other scope. So uh, things will get back to normal because I think last night was a very successful test for the Rasa. Um, and <laughs> I just put my dew shield back on. It was a little bit crooked because it fell off in the middle of the night when uh, the, the scope was switching to a new target. So um, I'll have to probably cut it up a little bit so I can push it on even deeper. Um, it's, it's kind of flimsy right now. So I'll, I'll fix that. And um, my cable management is kind of a mess right now. But I'll worry, I never really tore down the cable management from last time. It, uh, it, it's, it still has uh, my Moonlight focuser accessories. You can see the serial cable there for the Moonlight. And, uh, but uh, uh, that's minor. Um, nothing got tangled up when it was flipping across the meridian back and forth. So, because I was capturing uh, four different targets, and I'll show you them at the end of the video. Um, and well, let's take a look here a little deeper. Uh, here's my uh, my ZWO um, guide scope. I have I had these on my rack downstairs, two different um, um, clamps, so they they don't match. But I, I'm not trying to to win a beauty contest. They worked, and uh, that's all I needed. That's my ZWO ASI 224MC uh, planetary camera, which I also use as a guide camera, and that's just a plug down into my USB hub down at the bottom. And the weights kind of surprised me. I had to push two weights all the way down. I don't like when weights are hanging off the very end of the of the rod there. So uh, maybe I'll add a third weight eventually, but guiding was fine, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, but uh, it's really not much here to talk about. I just want to um, clean up the, the cable management and uh, let me take off the dew shield so you can see how I had my my, my camera looks like and uh, um, there, there's different ways you can route those wires I know there's an accessory that will help you route the wire in an arc to reduce the uh, um, the diffraction spikes you see in there in the image but um, I didn't have any bright stars um, in any of the pictures I captured last night so um, the fraction spikes weren't an issue and so I just uh, I took the two cables taped them up and then I taped them to the to the bottom rail here For, it's funny the electric tape had a hard time sticking to this to the to this part and I, I definitely uh, I secured it on the the, the bottom rail there and uh, this that seemed to work well. I, I saw no sign of, well, I don't think I would have seen diffraction spikes regardless because all the stars were small anyway in my my targets. I've kind of grown accustomed to that. I always pick targets where I don't have to deal with huge stars that might cause halos. That's just the way I am. So, I don't know. That's all I've got to say. Oh, and by the way, um, focus um, lasted all night. I set it at around 8 o'clock. Um, uh, in the evening and I never had to adjust it and the HFR stayed good the entire way through um, uh, Yeah, I never had to go outside and it, it it Despite going back and forth across the meridian that didn't really affect focus at all But it helped um, that the temperature outside Stayed the same there were if there had been big swings in the temperature that that might have impacted focus So I got lucky on the first night didn't have to worry about that so, anyway, uh, that's all I've got to share here. Uh, thanks for watching, folks, and I will see you later.